work for Mr. Beast? He's a sociopath. I'm hungry. All right, jokes for food. I, I wish a philanthropist YouTuber would just give me 10k and not film it. You know what's kind of crazy though? It's the fact that he's not monetizing this. You know if he monetized it, unironically you'd be looking at like thousands of dollars per video. Literal thousands. Hey, hey, the hell happened to you? Mr. Beast, that's what happened to me. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I was gonna beat somebody! I was gonna beat him! Kyle took my job! Kyle took my job! I'm the worst of the country that I didn't mean to make me do. Okay, content cop from Timu back at it again. So just before I get into my interrogation with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting like hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment, you know, just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know, fake videos or unsafe practices, uh, you know, toxic workplace, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really gonna get into those claims because for one, like Yo. most people want to stay know anonymous, which I understand. I, and also like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with and, uh, you know, news coming out of these also. games and everything. Thank you. I, and also I have like more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with If Mr. Two, Beast you know, is like so it, rich, I why does he even bother back. getting sponsors though? Okay, let me give you an example of like me and maybe this will help you understand. So for the longest time, what I did was I would spend absurd amounts on editing. I would have periods of time where I would not make any money for literally two months straight because I would spend literal tens of thousands of dollars on editing every single month. So you have to understand that for me, it's like the amount of money that I have in my bank account right now, unironically, is less than I've spent on editing in one year. So like I spend more than I make. But the thing about it is that the reason why you're comfortable doing it is because you're like, well, I know that if I eventually just market myself an insane amount, then I'll eventually make all that money back, hopefully someday. So it's kind of like imagine just permanent reinvestments. And I think Mr. Beast has the same idea. But the only thing is that a lot of people, instead of viewing it as permanent reinvestments for his own channel they view it as like oh mr beast doesn't actually care about money but i don't think that's necessarily the case i think it's just the fact that he values the publicity more right now but he values the publicity because he knows that one day the publicity is going to lead to long-term financial gain kendrick lamar versus drake uh, also i know mr beast's secret ceo has been practically like harassing my people on you know hey what's in part two what what does he know um so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three, so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious- Wait, there's gonna be a part three. Jesus Christ. Serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your Yo, you guys direct involvement in don't. covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit five and, months of and Dante's plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten dozens of messages from former Mr. Beast employees of-, of uh, Jesus! So- I just want to put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that, you know, if you have a story, you can DM me. Just uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because I get a lot of DMs. Uh, and like, as much as I meme and joke around, like, I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, Bro, I'm not public with anything. Guys, this is Jesus. But this is legitimately every YouTuber slash streamer slash content creator's biggest nightmare. That some guy one day just has enough of you. And then they're like, yeah, this guy's like a fucking bad dude. And then you have people coming out from literal years ago. And it's like, oh my fucking God. Like that's literally like Jesus Christ. Especially for a person like Mr. Beast. Where like this guy employs so many people that's like, Jesus fuck. And obviously if it could isn't that what they tried doing with you as Yo, well you recently i mean kind of yeah when i yeah like legitimately yeah you guys remember when i was getting like shit on and then afterwards there were four girls that tried exposing me by going on Tarzan's stream and just saying that i took them out on nice dates there's a court i don't i would hope they would censor your information from the court documents i don't know uh oh and former contestants too that's another thing i heard after posting my last video is uh, during the hundred boys Yo, versus girls video total? uh Best i have people the corroborating world. the same story that the the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable you know, you, you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and then, and then you try to f them 
Okay. That, <laughs> what? <laughs> that seems really dark. Now. No, no, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, okay. I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. Because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the right. thing is, is she's not gonna say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so that will be part three. So, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. So anyway, my interview with Jake Jesus. Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also, what people don't know is that he came back in 2021. I've done tests. I'm waiting for other big YouTubers to react to these videos, but I don't think they don't will. They're just going to stay quiet for now. It's kind of like people are riding trains, so to speak, right? And like the Mr. Beast train, it looks like it's going to be fucking combusting internally so there's a good chance a lot of people start turning on him soon sole contestant of a mr beast video which never got uploaded because it went very badly uh, he also knows about another um portable document format who, who was working at mr beast while while actually on the registry uh and, and i'll get more into that story at the end of the video uh, so i got his dm drove straight to new york overnight did not sleep just drank a bunch of caffeine and, and i also only had one uh, microphone in the interview which he's wearing so it's mostly just him talking also like final thing people said my last video started slow this video also starts slow it, it, it you know it builds up over time but i'll do the retention thing and say uh the ending will blow your mind it's crazy yeah okay uh jake weddle everybody i'm jake weddle uh, most people who uh if, if you know me from mr beast I'm, I'm a deep cut i'm in a few of the videos uh uh sometimes maybe Purposefully kept in the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. Uh, but I've, I've been in some videos. I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish when I came back and did some more. I was there when they were authentic. And then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company. He's like a TV show now. It went from, it went from YouTuber guy with a camera to uh, Amazon. The culture around there was very unspoken but you know i'm gonna be honest i'm just gonna say it i do think that to a, a certain extent mr beast's videos don't feel like youtube videos as much as they feel like tv shows but the thing is he wasn't the first one to start doing that when people would do like video essays and all that shit he just took what a video essay essentially is and made that into an actual entertaining video but it's like it doesn't necessarily feel feel like what the feel of like youtube in a sense is you know it feels more of like an actual tv show that you'd see airing on like live you know there was a vibe there was half the people who if you made jimmy happy you were on the good half and these people got random bonuses and uh were usually moved up had more screen time uh and then there was people who if you had a disagreement or butt heads with jimmy or just you didn't like it you know you were the other half and uh I consistently was in the half that Jimmy did. Jimmy doesn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that feels so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a, a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. Uh, and I could tell that the yes men were, you know, doing well. And uh, I was, you know, disgruntled uh, for quite some time. So I've talked to reporters. Right? Like publicly. And I've always had to choose my words very, very carefully because I don't want to say anything I don't stand behind, obviously. So I used to talk to people. I used to glaze Jimmy publicly for things I do genuinely think are true. Uh, but then it's like, well, how can we just talk about the working conditions? Well, I wanted a career. I didn't want to, you know, speak ill of YouTube's golden boy and then I'm blacklisted forever. I, I, I tell people I was talking to you and they go, don't, what are you doing? You're going to kill your career. It's like, I have to or I'll be sad. Uh, if this is the moment, we're going to talk about it. So, uh, as far as that, uh, that's my covering up of why we didn't talk about it. You what I got? You want to show what you got? Yeah, I got a pink vinyl player. Yeah, she got a pink vinyl player. Oh, you want to tell them the coolest part about it? You saved $30 on it. That's really good deals. Twice sooner, but now you know. What, what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? Fakest video that... I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is like, <laughs> admitting to my complicity. I was a writer there and we were working on a video uh, crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title of it. I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, 
and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddell's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have are no idea that we're doing this. Weddell GTA and Marcus are probably screen? shot. They had no Okay, dude, how the fuck can anybody think like this shit is real? You know what I mean? No idea. And so that was the one and only time I Okay, to I'm, I'm just gonna expose myself for a second. One of my most popular YouTube videos of all time is fake. This one. I use the League of Legends tag on Omegle. This guy's a friend from high school. He's one of my Twitch mods. Okay, that guy's real, real, real. That's another friend from high school Twitch mod. Uh, at the time was a Twitch mod. Rest is real. Professor Kali. <laughs> You know what I mean? Bro, I'm telling you, this video was literally fake that recorded off stream. Huh? My car? What? And on the fly, I saw him, uh, cause Marcus was in that video. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus yo, you guys know motherfucking Donald? Best hacker in the world. So Marcus is calling his mom. Yo, 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 And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I'm texting my mom, I go, I go, Mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send, and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my god, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. Wait, <laughs> A meteor hit it. Jesus, I'm on vacation. Do you understand? Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video, and they're supposed to give me 10K to put a down payment on a uh, new car and they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't afford the taxes on, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't afford the insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I can't afford that. Yo, you guys know motherfucking that, dog. Come on, you know, the I, I was working in the world. on a TV Me show so beef, no in the way. 90s on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. But now I make- Okay, but realistically, like Mr. Beast has all that money. Why would he not just be like, you know what? I've had disagreements in this guy in the, in the past. Let me just get him a car right now. It's gonna be no skin off my back. And then what'll happen is that in the future, he'll actually like me. Why would he not do that? Does Mr. Beast really have a lot of money? A hundred percent. Tens of millions world. of dollars. Seven, eight figures easily. Dog should pay. Uh, making gajillionaires more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left, was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing, given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that, and I talked about the Writers Guild and how this is what Writers Guild Industry Standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube and I didn't even bring up residuals because oh my god, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy howdy I could retire. But uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid and uh, I got paid more than him and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job. And uh, well, I'm some 20 year old fucking white guy. Why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, why is he randomly bring up the race? Why randomly bring up race? It matters. Oh, what do you mean it matters? Ooh, hold on a second. The things I, I didn't like about the way some of the V stuff shook out was. Hey, why is he crying now? What happened? I feel really guilty about the way this like shook out. Um, yeah, I was talking to this other writer, like it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is. And I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I'm not a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He's just, I, I like my job. I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know, you get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like, if that's, like, yeah, you know, I trust you. And he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew, 
if I knew he was going to lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. Okay. Why wouldn't Dogpack404 monetize this video and then give the revenue to that to that black guy, single dad? Why not do that then? Monetize the video and say all proceeds are gonna go to this guy. <laughs> because he's racist too. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna be honest. I don't I don't think so. Keep watching it becomes really dark. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're going to give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the, with the, you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day? You know, and I get to go, go home and say, you pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he was, he's wanting to be in the room, you know? And I really, regret, I really regret that. But, you know, me and him, we're really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe you feel better? Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's a very, very far removed from all this crazy shit, I guess. Do you think Jimmy really enjoys doing good and helping people? I think Jimmy wants to be the best YouTuber. I think he is laser focused on one goal. Um, and I think whatever he has to do to achieve that goal he'll do and i think it was the smartest decision for him that he calculated because he's very good with numbers if i donate to charity people can't say i'm shitty if i donate to if i give this homeless guy 10k what do you mean i'm a bad guy but I've always I know what he means though. The thing is like, I know what he means though. I'm about to say my craziest take of all time. When I was 16, I first started learning about philosophy. And part of the reason why was because I'd always be on 4chan and I'd always kind of read a little bit about it. And then one day I bought a book, started getting a little more, a little more into it, right? But when I started looking into philosophy, I remember there was the, there were these two concepts that I found out about, okay? One of them was called egoism versus altruism. That's what it was, okay? Egoism versus altruism. And what it stated was that egoism was a concept where you're doing stuff for yourself and for your own benefit. And altruism was a concept of you're doing stuff for other people and uh, to make them happy, so to speak. And I remember the first time I heard about that, my first thought was altruism doesn't exist. There's no such thing as doing something for other people. There's no such thing. Because if I go down the street right now and I see a homeless man, I give him $5 and I feel really good about the fact that I gave him $5. It's coming from an egoist place, you know, because I know that if I give this guy money, I'll feel really good about it. So that's why I'm going to give him money. So it's like, I remember my first thought being there's no such thing as like someone that genuinely will sit there and like genuine altruism. Like there always is some kind of like motive that's going to make it so that you're benefiting in some way. That's the truth about it. If you're going to do something nice for somebody, and you stick a camera in their face while you do it, that you didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You, you gained something. You, there was a homeless guy on the street and you saw an opportunity for yourself and your image and you gave one guy $10,000. Yeah, okay, listen, I'll give, you, I'll give you guys a perfect example. And maybe this makes me a sociopath. There was one time when I was in Korea and when I was there, I remember that there were literally maybe 10 to 15 league streamers and we went out to eat Korean barbecue. And I remember at the end, uh, keep in mind that at this time, out of everyone there, I was the biggest by far, right? And I was the one making most of my money by far. And I remember at one point thinking to myself and weighing it in my head, the total bill is like $2,000. Should I just cover the entire thing? Would it be like a thing where it's like, let's say the positive impact for my image, if they're like saying like, oh, like this is great, whatever. Would this outweigh the amount I'm actually financially spending? And it was like a literal debate in my mind that I was having for like 10, 15 minutes. They're just saying they're like, should I cover the entire bill and shit? But I feel like that's way more common than a lot of people let on because a lot of people just don't want people to think that they're like weird. Like type one, if you've ever been in a position like that, needed it to eat and now the did you end up covering it i didn't cover the entire bill but i covered my tables bill because we were like four people at a table and i think out of the four people that i covered one of them thanked me i don't even think anyone thanked me i'm not even trolling maybe one did revenue you ge generated from that video is way more than what you gave 
I think what he Jesus ungrateful. Well, it's because a lot of the time you have to understand that, especially when you're in like the streaming scene, just because two people have the same profession doesn't mean they have the same income. So it's like there's almost this expectation, so to speak, of like Dante's just in a, a subathon, made a crazy amount of money, gets way more viewers than all of us. I'm sure he's gonna cover it, you know. And then when I say, all right, guys, I got there, like, all right, nice, you know, it's like I don't mind doing nice things for people, but it's like if I'm gonna do a nice thing for you, you better recognize it. Like, don't. Don't sit there and just have an expectation of I'm gonna do it. If I'm gonna do it, you say thank you and like you show that you're actually grateful for it. You know, you know, that was like one of the reasons why I really liked Laura a lot, even from like the beginning when I first met her. Because every time I would do anything for her, it would always be thank you. She was always saying thank you, and I was like, yo, this is great. But yeah, that was like one of the things that actually made me like her like a lot. Was just like that sense of like gratitude. He's generous on camera, it's the least authentic thing in the world. There, there there's an element of, you know. Oh, hey, you're crying. That's so good for camera. You know, I'm so glad he's... If you're crying because you're so thankful that you got XYZ, and then you go, oh, that's so... I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could come in and... Oh, can, you, can you cry more? Oh, it's so good for the camera if you could... Oh, I just did. It, it made me uncomfortable that I was working there, and I didn't like it, and I vocalized it sometimes. And Jesus. I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much. <laughs> Thank as you they for streaming. Uh, uh, I was told at one point that I was going to be like fourth banana. You know, it was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me, you know. And then that never happened. I remember Yo, talking about that. Like, hey, I the fucking the best uh, And then the I got world. the severance checks. So, you know, whatever. All that regard. So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right. So, so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later. First of all, you did for him months ago, and I was like, I don't have a real one for that. No, I was here for long enough for that. It's a more danger. Yeah, because that's the thing for me is just that, like, when people will do nice things for me, it's something that I'll never really forget, you know? How can I explain it? it okay, it's super weird because by all means, I should be a narcissist, right? But it's like, I'm a narcissist in certain sense, in certain, like, senses, but not in others, right? So, like, for example, let's say a guy helps me a year ago, and then one day, comes up to me he's like Dantes I'm gonna be honest like I really need your help someone that's like a severe narcissist would look at that guy and say you have nothing to offer me so fuck off whereas I feel like for me it's always been a thing of like well there was a time that I really needed you and you came in so I'll like return the favor but it's like the people that will sit there and just kind of like use people and then once they're not useful to them anymore just kind of like discard that was always something that rubbed me like the wrong way you know especially when it came to like editors or anything like financial where it was like uh, certain people would like give you lots of opportunities like, I don't know. Just that kind of like mentality was always like weird. Why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I was, I was hoping they call back, you know? And uh, I, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a, a, a three days in a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a, the with a rates and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in, I got, I got paid a lot for it, but it didn't, uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it didn't, it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There was, there was a video, um, that came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was, it was the, uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the, uh, the like surviving like a uh, $10,000 every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was, just, it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And people don't know that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. And it, uh, it didn't go well. What does he mean it didn't go well? Explain. I, I, was, already, I was already planning on uh, moving to New York. And I had worked at a couple of YouTube companies after Beast. And I had a little bit of change in my pocket. You know, the most change I had in my pocket ever. You know, small potatoes. Yeah, compared to beast bullshit, but, you know, I thought I had enough to, to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, hey, they want you for a video. I was like, oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, they, what's the video? And they tell me the print, the pitch. And they, they, they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is uh, 100 days in solitary confinement. Uh, but don't worry, like, you only have to last, like, 30, we have, like, a video. They are pitching it like a, oh, at first it's gonna be, like, a luxury vacation. You're gonna have, like, a hot tub and an ice cream machine 
And like part of the video is gonna be you deciding like what 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 items am I gonna get rid of you know today? You know what the most fucked up thing ever is, dude? Give me a fucking PC and I could spend a thousand days in solitary. But it's like if I don't have that PC, holy shit. And it has like the choice. Cap? No, that's not cap. That is not cap, dude. My streaming career for literally like three years was like solitary confinement. I would literally just go gym and then home stream fifteen hours. Voice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for the last, like, five days tops when you have, like, nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be like a breeze for most of it. And, uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get $300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. Jesus. Like, I know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, blah, 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 excuse me, you, I'll yell dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. They were like, you're going to be locked in this room, and we got to make sure you're on all the time. We're going to have cameras on you all the time, and you're perfect for this, because you never shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this. And, and I was, they always they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me that uh, it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought, this is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. That I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. Uh, and uh, I get there. And at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know, which that's probably not good. You know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. Uh, it looked good on the visual. Like the, it looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, it was in one of the studios. The, they had to like get like a separate like tank for, you know, septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like things look, were cool and funny on paper. But when you think about stuff. Yeah, I mean, realistically, if you're alone for 30 days, what the fuck is an ice cream machine going to do to you, dude? The only thing I would do is like the ice cream machine and make like an ice cream that's what i would do but it's like you can't even show that on fucking youtube bro a hot tub if not connected to a filter listen i'm about to say something what if i told you guys that the human experience is not an individual thing and it's actually a collective thing and everybody that is born is bound to go through the same exact thought processes all humans are born the same and the reason why i know this is because every man here every single one here has busted their first in the public pool when they would stand in front of the fucking jets and they just sit there and have it fucking like m like massaging their penis, dude literally every single man has done that filtration system give it three days it's gonna stink you know if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best which i was a silly complaint but the shower was always cold and you, you're taking like a quick shower and, and I had cameras 24-7 on me and the ice cream machine. Let's talk about that for a second. The ice cream machine has two modes. On. Bang, and off. Reeking of smelly, dairy, mildew. Like, so I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. Uh, so the, the little things started to build up. You know, there was like a... a, a the bug thing wasn't like terrible, but it was a factor. And like at first it was fine, you know, and you're, you're, you're playing it up like, cause you know, it's a video. And it got to a point where like, they weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like have like nighttime hours? You know, and they said no, because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what, me sleeping or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a, a Okay, that's really fucked up, though. Not turning off the lights at night, that's fucked up. Because it would mess up the time-lapse shots. Just use, like, those, um... That, those, like, nighttime... N nighttime cameras. Where, where you can see, you know? It's like, oh, you're gonna get XYZ hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Well, I don't know how they figured that one out. I didn't have it! <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now, um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. I had good people looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we got to stop. So I, I, uh, I just wanted to turn the lights off.
And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people, I wish the life would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, my, my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess. Is what <laughs> 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 this guy's funny. This guy's funny. I need to get him on a Minecraft stream. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin. You know, it's not helping. You know, and then, and then Jimmy would come in, like, every other day for, like, an hour, you know, to check in on me because he's doing other All stuff. All they need to do is just uh, put on night vision. Yeah, literally, just put night vision. Give him a clock. And then every day at 8 p.m., the lights go out and it's night vision mode. How hard is that? You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd get the <laughs> Okay, this was a bit of a crazy comparison to make. But there was another point in history where people did experiments on people. You know what I mean? That's all I'm going to say. I still do that. I know what you're Director over the phone. That would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? They pretend to make it genuine. Jesus Christ. Bro, imagine all those videos Mr. Beast did, like, curing blind people. And, like, you have this person that was blind that's like, oh, my God, I can see again. And then he's like, nice. Can you start, like, crying for us now? Come on. Like, you can finally use your eyes again. Let's get some fucking tears going. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus. I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You just be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, and you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agreed to it. I needed it, of course. And there's something about, like, having the cameras on me all the time. Like, I was, I was, I was not having a good time, but we were filming a video. So I was trying my best to be funny, you know? I'm, I got, I, I'm a dark comic, you know? I, I, got, I got bits about, I had a very traumatic life. Uh, I have, my, 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 my dad is in jail for assault of a minor, you know? So this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. And yeah, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because, you know, that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I, I have abusive relationships. I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a type eye about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse, but we're filming. So I'm doing bits. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> and I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days. I'm not doing so hot, you know, which if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera. But it, it, was, it was too real. If they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off, of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse footage for 10 seconds? Did you uh, try to get out? Yes! I was starting to calculate, um, oh, I don't know if I could do 30. Uh, uh, how much uh, can I, well, how, how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um, get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. Isn't that Good. crazy though? Imagine something being so unbearable that even for $10,000 a day, you can't do it. How crazy is that? All right, yeah, scr go ahead and scrub that footage. You know, you got that whiteboard. Oh, oh no, either that goes in or this footage is unusable. And then, you know, James Warren came in and erased it. You know, fucking, you know don't, don't put that, don't, don't. hey, we can torture him. Don't you dare let him get a plug in there, you know? Uh, so, uh, it, like, we were playing up the joke, you know? It's like, oh, I'm the boy in the cage, you know, whatever. Like, I'll play into a joke, whatever, it's fine. It's just something weird about when Jimmy jokes. I have jokes about my dad because I love jokes with my dad. I'll joke with my dad all the time. I guess piece of shit, I hate my dad. Uh, 
I have friends that make fun of my dad. That's fine, because I know their intent. I know where they're coming from. So when Jimmy joked with my dad, and I said that to seem weird. I don't like it. Yeah, we were doing that one of those hide and seek. Yo, videos. you guys know motherfucking yeah. Donald. Time, they were a lot real. Best hacker in the world. Uh, so I got caught. I and am when you get caught, you know, you go to the you know, you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this. I don't know if you know, I, don't, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he he says to me, uh, "All right, you're going to jail. You know, like your dad." And like, it's a joke. <laughs> but when my my friends do it, it's fine. And, and Jimmy just wasn't my friend. He was my boss, and that wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim, and I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got these cameras on me all the time, and I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me, saying, you good, bud? Realistically, realistically, if the guy stays in there four days, he can just leave, no? Four days, at four days, you have the cash you need and you're fine for the year. Like, 40,000 should be enough that you can say, all right, I'm good with 40,000 for at least a year, and then I'll find something else. You know what I mean? Realistically. I was like, yeah, why? You're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is haunting. Because I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm sitting like, who's watching this? Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in here. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I'm asleep by the other time. You know what out. Mr. B should do? He should embrace evil Mr. B Stark. Have people go up to him and then pay them to do experiments on them. Like, how long can you live without an arm? But we'll make sure your family's taken care of for the rest of your life. Evil Mr. B Stark needs to happen now. It's the perfect setup for it. Like in game, though. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, what's the challenge today? He goes, you're going you're gonna to run a marathon. You're going to do 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube, and I'm not, I'm not dyslexic, I'm dumb, I don't, I don't have to do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge Rubik's Cube, I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. I was like, on oh, camera, I don't, I don't want to do it. He goes, just do it for the thing, my kid, you like, yeah. Like, th th there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's good. We know he's good. I couldn't say no to the, <laughs> the treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, I Bro, I, Mr. Breeze should do a video getting 50, like, convicted offenders in one room together, giving them all one weapon that's like a toy, and then see who, like, the last is to survive. Like, on some Hunger Games type shit. In game, though. How insane would that be? He should host the Hunger Games with homeless people, and the winner gets a house. <laughs> Oh my god. I, people who run marathons train forever and it's still hard. Again, writer. Do I look like I run? I don't run, you know? Let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like, they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? Then you, you, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, oh, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I started running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and... But realistically, could they not just bring in a dartboard and be like, all right, if you can get three bullseyes, and then it's like the same amount of entertainment value as him running a fucking marathon? You know what I mean? Keep watching. Uh, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. All right, I got off the treadmill. 
Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It's all over, just these big red. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like just like the lactic acid. I, I. Wait, he said he went from 12 to 3. Does he mean 15 hours straight of running? I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet and you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, I'm out. I mean, that's when um, yeah, they get psych in and I talk to the psych about how I'm uh, not well. And uh, like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying, you got to pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows okay. you. Everybody loves you. Can I make one thing very, 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 very clear? Listen up, buddy. Listen, Jerry Ox, listen. This guy's a bitch ass. 99% of people would work for Mr. Beast. This guy complains he has to lie and run a marathon. I guess Americans are like that. You realize the entire reason why these videos are so effective is because the general perception of Mr. Beast is that he's a nice guy that does things out of the goodness of his heart. And these stories just lend credit to the idea that he doesn't do it out of the goodness of his heart. He's just like a ruthless businessman, so to speak. This is the reason why these videos are so effective. Because people have like a false idea of like what Mr. Beast actually is. They go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I don't love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like at least seven more days? I, no. No. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, yeah, everything was fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> and uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it. Uh, <laughs> they brought in all the people I liked and Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Yeah. But Jimmy had his like, he was sitting in the chair, turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me, and he was like Lex Luthor over there. <laughs> he turns around, he stands up. Oh, he, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video, and he's um, he's like, oh, stop, you're going to make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not, he's just... I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says, uh, you know, as, as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, your mental health is the most important thing. You know, just want to make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is... I can almost hear the word Sue come out of his mouth. The S. He just, he just stopped right before it got out. I, I did not get the 300 keg. What I got, he goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for X, Y, Z days. You did X, Y, Z challenges. So you got, you know, 100,000 some change, you know, give or take. <laughs> you know how much money I spent in taxes in, a, in, a, uh, in 2021? I spent $44,000 in taxes alone. <laughs> and now... I spent all that money on... Yeah, that's what happens when you make a lot of money. You need to pay taxes. The fuck is he on about? Like, welcome to the real world. Like, what? Doing stand-up. I just... I bought plane tickets to go do comedy festivals. You know, my family back home. I gave them a bunch of stuff that they needed. And I uh, haven't been back on a beast set in any official capacity or unofficial capacity uh, since then. And then uh, they did the video with somebody else and they worked out the kinks. And then uh, I'd still gotten some hot water and I knew it would. And I've wanted to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And <laughs> I feel good though. Alexander will never pay any taxes. Bro, are you Alexander? Who the fuck is Alexander? <laughs> Bro, this guy's just typing pot friend and then narrating his life in the third person. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? 
I just had to get that out there. So I just want to hop in here and show some text that Jake sent me after this interview. This is July 29, 2021, a few days after he got out of uh, solitary. How are you feeling after a few days? Better. I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk on. Medical advice I got was not to lance them and just let them go away with time. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned, but we are working on things. Mind you, this is not supposed to be a traumatic life event. This is supposed to be a uh, Mr. Beast video. Hey Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check in on you. Hey, I'm good and I appreciate that. I'm not- Who the exactly fuck 100%. is this? I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit, but back in therapy and my therapist is concerned. Haha, -ha, but my legs and joints feel better. Like I can walk, but my feet are still covered on- Honestly, blisters. fuck them for not giving you the money? Wait, what What they not give him? ...and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is stay off my feet and let them heal. I'm in rally with my family. Also, it'll be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They're giving me what I won up to that point in the game, which was also a slap in the face. But hey, I'm out. I'm alive. Therapist I mean, okay, but realistically, if you're going in and they're going to give you 300,000 for 30 days and you only make it 10 days and they give you 100,000, like that, I don't really see the problem with. Maybe I'm like crazy for thinking that, but like... Who knows and cares about you. The whole thing was so fucked and honestly, fuck them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best with your recovery and please feel free to reach out if you need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money. So good. I appreciate. I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking, too much, one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kind of shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 days. They paid me what I made up to that point. Like, even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I mean, yeah, like what? I mean, listen, it seems like Mr. Beast is, yeah, like growth oriented, but this guy's just 100% about the money, isn't he? I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. And like, I'm not famous enough to burn a bridge. So at the end of the day, I'm still Jimmy's bitch. Like if I was Carl and he did that to me, I'd ruin him. And they want to do it again. That could be your leverage. If the guy breaks down also, two is better than one. Yeah, right. I told them everything they did to me that they can't do again in order to make sure the other person doesn't break down as fast. But like the way the video is meant to function is the problem. It's a bad idea, full stop. It sounds clickbaity, sounds right up Jimmy's alley, but it's morally unethical like on every level. Off camera breaks, lights off at night, visitation, take the marathon out. Marathon is a video in itself. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing, felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. It felt like of Jeff Bezos had a gimp. It felt like if Jeff Bezos had a gimp, part of me wants the footage burned and part of me thinks that there's a great horror cut in there. LMAO, he was so <laughs> fake when he came Yo, in. Yo, you guys know motherfucking Donald? Health. They must have Best programmed the, the care about mental health updates. Uh, he said, we also don't want you to... S and I swear to our Lord and Savior, he stopped himself from saying sue. Also, as far as like, he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I want to show the segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called No does not mean no. Already insane. Uh, because it's sort of... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no does not mean no. Why didn't Mr. Beast become a fucking Minecraft YouTuber? It would have been right up his alley. Jesus. Fuck. No does not mean no. Their anti rape slogan. Um... Which is a terrible look given the allegations that are going to be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads, When dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If we need a store to buy everything inside of, and you can call the local Dollar Tree, and the person that answers says no you can't film here, that literally doesn't mean shit. Okay, I just want to say, for an internal work document, why use this kind of informal writing? Like, why is the writing so informal? That's so weird. Talk to other employees and see if they are fans or if any have kids that are fans. 
try talking to their boss, their boss's boss, have me DM them on Twitter and try their social team. If all avenues are exhausted and you are left with a no, that doesn't mean don't try the other Dollar Trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules. Basically what I'm trying to convey is what we call pushing through no. Don't stop because one person told you no. Stop when all conceivable options are exhausted. This is one of many tools that when combined dramatically improve your probability of success when producing. Bro, the, the Mr. Beast team at a bar. Hey, do you want to sleep with me? No. What if you had a couple more drinks in you? No. You know what I mean? Like, in-game, it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. I kind of get what they're getting at with, like, the whole thing of, like, be persistent, try to find other avenues. But it's like, why sit there and face it as no does not mean no? Like, that is a literal disaster waiting to happen. Listen here. So, so yeah, this idea of like pushing through no's is a big component to, to working at Mr. Beast. Um, and, and, and the way that it manifests itself a lot of the time is like a director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, if you're the producer, you obviously know that means get it done or you lose your job. So, so what can happen is like a producer's calling up farmers saying, hey, I need to use your land. And the farmer might be like, okay, but you know, I have animals, you can't be making really loud noises, no pyrotechnics, and you gotta clean everything up. So the Yo, producer you guys sort of incentivizes to don't. lie and say, or maybe the, the producer world. doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video, right? Things change last second. So they're very like, they're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of, they're put in positions where it's like, oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job. Like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired, you know? I'll show you a real life example. This is unused evidence from um, part one. I had seen this Reddit post uh, titled, Mr. Beast leaving trash behind and debris at film site in Aden, North Carolina. Apparently he left a large boat in a pond as well as debris around the film site in the bottom of the pond weeks and weeks after the agreed time frame. This actually rendered it unsafe for campers and almost delayed the camp's opening date multiple times due to not being able to get in contact with Mr. Beast to get the stuff cleaned up out of the area. Uh, so I actually know that this is from a Mr. Beast video called Protect the Yacht, Keep It. Uh, where at the end of that video, he actually says, and If you're wondering, yes, we did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. For the love of God, subscribe so we can pass T series. Yes, yeah, so he says at the end of the video that they made sure it was cleaned up. I was actually Yo, on you guys site, know motherfucking um, for part of this production. I, I was at this camp. So I decided to send an email out to the camp. Basically saying, hey, I heard these rumors. I'm, I'm investigating a similar incidents. Uh, and the camp responded, uh, actually not denying the claims, going on to say, I am sure that there are no perfect film productions just as there are no perfect people. I am grateful for the opportunity that we had to host the production crew and because grace or forgiveness has been offered to me so freely, I will choose to offer the same. So clearly alluding to the fact that there was a wrongdoing on, on, by Mr. Beast's production team. And that's like sort of the thing is if you're around Greenville, you know these stories of people working with Mr. Beast and it being extremely unprofessional, them not doing what they say but they sort of get by a lot on their, their good public image. And, and like, I mean, this camp offered to, to host them completely for free. And I guarantee like, if you went to the, the lake at the camp and you, and you went magnet fishing, like you, you'd find all sorts of debris that's still there to this day. Like they, they didn't clean it all up. So in the case of Jake Weddle, like I'm sure that there were producers who were in a position of, hey, if Jake gets out early, we don't have a video and your job is at risk. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure on top of like, him being delirious from not sleeping and, and everything to, to just manipulate him to, into staying. Which, which, you know, I'm sure this isn't like technically against the Geneva Convention on torture because he wasn't technically a prisoner. Like he could have left at any time, but because of the extreme pressure to stay in, it's not really a reasonable expectation that he could have just, you know, walked out. Because of the implication. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe yeah, had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it. Uh, Cause I, you know, had it rough growing up. And I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone, you know, fixates on a thing, you know. I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad. And because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior, if you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward 
And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. And he didn't care who got hurt. And didn't Jimmy not have a dad? I, I don't fucking know. Was really, really not so great people. And those people were the ones making the decisions. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. Mr. And Beast has done so much good for the world, though, that this doesn't even matter. Yeah, but, okay, so there are two problems with what you're saying. The first problem is, I guess there's a separation between doing something good and then people thinking you're a good person. And then the second thing is that apparently there's a lot of, like, from what the guy that made the video was saying, workplace, like, harassment and assault that got covered up. So it's like, maybe it's not all sunshines and rainbows. Let's keep watching. They, it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen, and they do. And so, I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my fucking job. I'll buy in a hole. I don't care. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know? I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But, uh, just, let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was uh, this, this was like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team, everybody. everybody like, knows. okay, everybody to give knows. you guys an example, imagine I rounded up a hundred homeless men and children, okay? And I say for everyone that I beat until unconsciousness, I will donate $15,000 to charity. Overall, it's a good thing, but does it make me a good person? Not necessarily. Do you guys see what I mean now? Behind closed doors is a real piece of shit. And so... When stuff starts hitting the fan. What? Him? No. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. But then the news broke, you know, that he did what he did to one of the students of the team. And it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, when I saw my dad in the news, I said, Oh, you idiots. Like, I was like, no, what? I was, oh, d dumbass. God damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised. And it was Wait, just what? a consequence that's happened to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time. And I don't know. Everybody, everybody loves Jimmy. And behind closed doors, he is not super great. And that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally. And... It's branding, it's marketing, it's, it's you too. Okay, so I guess, yeah, just one final question on sure. a serious note. Uh, obviously, the Ava Chris Tyson. This guy's out. point would have been so much better if he wasn't this emotionally unstable. No, I think the emotional instability lends a lot of credit to the video. The only thing that I don't really like is the kind of like sense of entitlement that I felt like he had towards like, for example, getting the full 300,000 or stuff like that, you know? But like overall, I think the emotions and the emotional showcase isn't that bad. And, um, you know, that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, did you witness or hear about any uh, misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast Reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just you know, being silly and goofy in front of the camera. And uh, Ava was the only person who was willing to film. Everybody else was too busy or didn't want to. And I was just trying to do my job. Sometimes there'd be like an offhanded joke. That's a little gross. I mean, I'm a stand-up, so I'm very desensitized to that. I didn't hear anything that was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like when I saw, the reason I messaged you instead of talking to reporters sweetly like I have been was when I saw the Discord stuff for the, I never, because when I, when I got there, it was like 2019. So I guess if the timelines add up, that would have been like, handled for lack of a better term and then they and then they started bringing more people on gotcha, maybe, man. maybe later also uh, all right we handled that now let's bring in some writers you know um and 
when I saw it, all that stuff start coming out. And the potentiality as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have <laughs> Dude, done. oh my god, Mr. Beast could have made Yo, such insane videos though. Total? Like imagine, we took one skinny guy and gave him man. every steroid on the planet for one month to see how much muscle he would grow. You know what I mean? Like, he could literally do like human experiments, it would be so crazy. In those Discord chats, or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me. And if you're gonna make fun of my dad. I don't care what happens to me and my career and reputation after this, I had to I had to say some stuff. So I mean, bro, okay. Like I, I don't like I don't like this take this thing of like oh I make fun of my dad being in prison all my friends make fun of my dad being in prison everyone I know does it and like I make literal stand-up comedian jokes about it but you made one joke that I didn't really like and if you're gonna do that I don't care what happens like come on dude you know it's like that that's like another thing where it's like come on you know he like he has a lot of good points throughout the video but it's like this is just like cringe like borderline cringe Whatever happens, happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct to the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I, if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. Huh? The idea that Jimmy didn't know. Adontas, here's a link to the first six episodes of Arcane Season 2. No way Riot leaked the first six episodes of Arcane Season 2. I mean, listen, that, listen I'm going to be honest. That's karma. You want to make the Leandris meta a fucking meta for months? That's karma. What's up? Someone drew Hecate as a Monster High character. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Fuck her, be honest. Well, fuck her, no. Say pinky promise. Pinky promise. Or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew. Yeah, but you know what's so crazy about content creators covering up sexual assault stories? Is that it's literally happened to almost every single big content creator and people have just like forgot. I'm not gonna sit here and reopen old drama, but there have been so many massive streamers that have covered up and nowadays they're just chilling and people just kind of like forgot you know what i mean and it's not just one it's like multiple like if you're at a certain level of size as a content creator where people can still milk you for views it's like th there just comes a point where they don't care anymore and they're like oh whatever doesn't matter well there was a known offender registered offender convicted offender on the registry and everything what is this who worked there and like you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, you, that, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read to rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear. It's available on Twitter now? On the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. Wait, who was it? What? Listen, I'm just gonna say it. 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 And what I'm about to say is the truth. If you disagree with me, you're literally Twitter brained. The thing is, nobody that's older or nobody that's like above 18 or whatever it is, right? Should have relations with people that are underage ever under any circumstance. But there is a massive difference between a 20 or 21 year old being with like, let's say a 17 year old and somebody being with like a literal child of like nine ten years old this is legit grounds for execution you know like in game and they knew that he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people and they covered up the fact that not only did he work there but he was like the manager when it all started and you know 
that he knew and because he'll be in videos. He'll be in thumbnails. He's, he'll be around. Okay. Not to be that guy, but why do all like pet or fucking like salt? They all have the same kind of look. You know what I mean? Like in game. And whatever he, he, he is. He's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you would see this guy and you'd be like, I am not safe around this person. Conceal your face. It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are in registered under? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender? With a physical mask? Like, do I have to... Is okay, but... Is it more and also, guys, from Mr. Beast's point of view, you want to become the biggest YouTuber ever. You want to sit there, you want to become the, the little biggest YouTuber, most famous guy on the planet, right? That's your goal. Why the fuck would you ever work with a registered defender like there's no way that he really sat there and thought to himself i'll do this for 15 years and no one will ever be like the smoking gun against me you know what i mean you're literally hiring these ticking time bombs dude or on the nose or <laughs> I, I don't know why they let him go because there's there's rumors back and forth you know so i don't know why they let him go but he didn't leave at one point even if that guy didn't do anything they still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. He's like, why, 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 do, you, why do you call him Delaware? And I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. <laughs> That's his nickname? <laughs> Come on, Willie. Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, but... You know about it, the likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. All right, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry, and that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Yo, you guys know motherfucking Donald? Best heckler in the world. Type one with Mr. Beast looks like Kazakh. Guys, you know that this is a voice changer, right? This is a voice changer that they're using to mask the identity of the person talking. You guys are saying no shit, but I guarantee you that at least 30% of you weren't sure. Type 1 if you weren't sure. Type 2 if you knew all along. Yeah, exactly, but I'm the fucking moron because I decided to clarify. Fuck you, fucking bullies. Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reed's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. <laughs> also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know, but you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with. So I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like what, you're not doing background checks. You're not, everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying, I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Add Dantes, watch Arcane, please. You wanna know what the funniest thing is? I guarantee with how fucking scuffed Kick is as a website that if I were to search up Arcane, you'd find some guy watching the Arcane series right now. No one's doing it? Wow, okay an explanation from you or, or you know your your lawyers and, and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and 
um, on how you could have not known that there was an offender uh, at a high level in your company. And while you respond to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to shout him out. Jake Weddle, top link in the description. <laughs> I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing.